Coming up on this week's Dirt Shed Show, we're talking about an absolutely fantastic bike and some absolutely terrible ones. And why you can actually win that amazing bike as well. And we're going to catch up with the tech from Doddy at Eurobike. And unbelievably, we've got a shocker in the bike vault. It's all coming up on the Dirt Shed Show. 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 Yes, welcome to this week's show with me, Neil Donahue, and... Yes, that's me, Martin. You're Martin Ashton. You always forget. <sighs> no, it's cool. Yes, we've got some great stuff coming up on this show, and we are going to be talking about, and have been talking about this week, about this amazing bike we're giving away. Yeah. It's unreal. New or Bear Rowan, you can design your own bike. I rode this bike the week, actually. It's brilliant. Uh, I re very much enjoyed riding it. Yeah, it looks very cool. And, and we're going to get to that in a minute. But yeah. in talking about this bike, Neil, we got onto the subject of some of the worst bikes we've ever ridden. Yeah. And there are some horror shows well, in there. You've got a history of riding lots of different bikes. Yes. So I've ridden actually more during my GMBN days, I've got a chance to ride more bikes than ever. Yeah. But I have ridden some pretty bad ones. Mm. What's the worst bike you've ever ridden, Martin? I don't, I don't want to admit what Surely it it's is. Not. I don't want to say what it is, Surely Neil. it's not a Candell. It is. It is a It's Candale. a Candell. The cool. worst bike What's I've this? ever ridden is a Cannondale. Let me tell you about it. It's called the Cannondale Raven. Yeah, I right. remember looking at one. Okay, I remember being at the press launch of this bike, right? <laughs> yeah. And they got it out and I thought it was a joke. It's like, oh. a, it's like an aluminium skeleton with like carbon pods on either side of it. Wasn't that like a seat tube that sort of sat behind yeah, the frame? Yeah, it, it, it was very strange. Yeah, the seat tube was kind of almost like bolt on. Yeah, right. And it made the worst, like it, it didn't ride that bad. The geometry was very similar to other bikes, yeah, but we'll it made this horrible noise. It mm. echoed, it had like echo chambers in it. I know it. what you mean, yeah. And it was just, Grim, but it was like their flagship bike of the time, and I had to ride it around at some shows. And oh, I just hated the blooming thing. It was grim. <laughs> Who knew Cannondale could get it wrong? Apparently they could. Only that one time. They've built some pretty wacky bikes. Does it, remember the old Daniel? Was it the V? Oh, what was it called? The Super V. Yeah, that the was Super good. V. That was, good. that was a good bike. Was good. That was a good bike. Right. They did some good bikes. But yeah, that is the worst bike I've ever ridden. Neil, I'm going to put it back on you. What's yeah. the worst bike you've ever it's ridden? It's a bit controversial because the GT Lobo, in many people's eyes, is like the ultimate yeah. retro Daniel bike. But the geometry was so wrong that the seat tube basically had this pull shock and like a really cool rear end on it. Mm. But obviously the, it didn't work because it didn't fit. So basically the seat tube had to sit further forward. So when you sat down on the bike, it was basically like you were sat in front of the BB and you were pedaling like this. <laughs> I actually rode Steve Pete's very own proper custom one-off Lobo at the 99 World Champs as a junior because yeah. he was injured, so I rode his bike. It was way too big. It was kind of cool, but it was still completely wrong. And the stock bike, as new, came with the SDG Big Boy Saddle. Remember that? Yeah, Quite I that do. Big. Yeah. So you could run it so far back, you could almost sit in the right spot, but you couldn't sit down because those things are impossible. And rock shocks, cable pull disc brakes that are just pushed from one side it did not work <laughs> at all. <laughs> it sounds like a disaster. It was pretty disastrous. I actually never liked the look of the Lobo. I don't care what any of you old guys out there say. I think it was ugly, but I'm glad to hear it rode as bad as it looked. If you stood up, it was good. If you sat down, it was pointless. It was terrible. It didn't actually terrible. last very long. The iDrive came around pretty quick, as far as I remember. Yeah. I yeah. also rode a ProFlex 957 for a GMBM video. Gervin Vector Fork. Terrible. Uh, oh my I, God. I did my first downhill race on one of did those. You? And I, I, because it had suspension, I thought it was a downhill bike. Turns out that's a very different thing. It yeah. had basically had two little rubber bullets. That's it. And that was. It. Henrik Jernes used to race that bike cross country, didn't he? Yeah, he won the world championship on that bike three times. So it's probably right for the right thing. Yeah, not too bad. Um, yeah. It's been quite fun talking about bikes we hate. It's enjoyable as it goes. So why don't you try it at mm. home and then let us know in the comments down below. Maybe we'll add them up for next week. What is the yeah. worst bike you've ever ridden? Put it down below, tell us why, yep. or just put the name in and we'll count them out and we'll see if we can find the worst bike in the world. Well, they're all our bikes are old bikes. Maybe there's some bad new bikes. Oh, oh, that would be interesting. Mm. But you know what? Today, we can get past the worst bikes because we're talking about a brilliant one that we're about to give away and this is how you can do it.
Okay, so last week you might have seen our evolution of enduro video where we're celebrating the release of the new Orbea Rallon. Now this bike is cool. You've been riding it, Neil. I have, it's yeah. It's updated. It is, uh, new geometry, some cool new features. It's got storage in the frame. Comes with a spare linkage, actually, so you can run a mullet, a 275 wheel on the back if you want, or nice, 29er nice. together as it comes. Yeah. Lovely new bike. So you can also do some other cool things with this because you can kind of like design your own, and that's kind of where this competition is. Yes, going. so this competition is slightly different to our normal ones. What you need to do is uh, follow the link down below, head over to the Orbea website, basically get involved on the Mayo customizable uh, systems. It's like, you know, you can kind of you could spec a car, you can choose yeah. the colors. You can do this with a bike, you can choose colors, you can write your name on it, decals components, all sorts of cool stuff. So customize your own bike. We want to see them as well. Mm. Basically, what you need to do then is make your own account on the Orbea website. Really important, otherwise they won't get your uh, username and they won't give it away to you. So do all that, save it, even send us a picture, use our uploader, because we want to see them. Mm. Maybe in a few weeks time you can take a look at all the different designs you've done. Definitely. And basically, one lucky person will get to win a brand new custom Orbea Rallon. Over 18s only, but if you're under 18, you can probably get your parent or guardian to do this for you. Wow, this sounds like the best contest ever. Pretty and I, cool. I, I can't wait to look at some of the designs. Yeah. So go over, do your Mayo design, start that account. Like Neil said, that's important. And we're gonna see who wins this amazing Oof. bike. No, this one's an amazing bike, not like them pieces of turd we were just talking about. <laughs> yeah. It's great stuff. Okay, right, it's time to get some news from Tom and then a little bit of action from Toff too. See what he's worried about this week. It's a bit whack. <laughs> <laughs> What's up everyone, welcome back to another weekly roundup of mountain bike news. I'm going to kick off with the new Orbea Rallon. If you haven't seen our evolution of enduro video yet, which is all about how enduro trails have developed and the bikes alongside them, catch it on GMBN YouTube after the show as it's a great watch. EWS racing is coming thick and fast. We've had round seven in Crown Montana, Switzerland to contend with this week, where the tracks were a killer mix of high speed bike park and fresh cut super loam the kind that really tends to get the Enduro crew going. You can catch up with all the racing yourself on our EWS coverage playlist. Remember this prototype DaVinci that we spotted in the pits and that the global racing team have been riding since the start of the season? We've got all the info on that right here tomorrow on our YouTube, so don't miss that. While we're on the subject of Switzerland, this is the Score 4060, a new bike from a new Swiss company. Score are part of BMC, taking the precision of the engineers and mashing it together with Alpine trail riders who ride for the hell of it. The 4060 is named as such due to its ability to change between a 140mm travel trail bike and a 160mm travel enduro bike just by changing the shock. It's a very good looking bike with that super low slung shock driving the virtual pivot suspension but also keeping the majority of the weight around the BB. It's got a clever stash box underneath the down tube and comes in either purple, mint or slate grey. What might be the most interesting bit about it though is that the build options opt to spend money on things like good suspension, decent casing tires and larger brake rotors instead of lightweight higher end drivetrains. With that in mind, there's an NX build for €4,300 or a GX build for €6,300. After 20 years of taking to the start line, sick Mick Hanna has announced that he'll be retiring after the snowshoe double this year. It was only last week that I mentioned to my mates how rad it was to still see Mick qualifying in the top 30 and getting on the Red Bull feed, putting down solid runs. But after 17 podiums, three world champs medals and one elite win, he's calling it a day. Results are in from Proving Grounds, the freeride development event designed to help athletes push their boundaries on XL features. It was Carsten Storch taking the top step with Reed Boggs in second and Dylan Stark third. Kami Nogura threw down to beat Hannah Bergman in the women's field. Right, something a bit different here from Whoop. They're the company that makes sensors that measure your body's performance and can probably give you more data about yourself than Google. They've released the 4.0, which is a new version of their sensor. Designed to be worn 24 seven, it's smaller than ever with a five day battery life. This unassuming looking little strap collects data about your body, like the usual stuff you'd expect from smart tech, such as step counting, heart rate monitoring, but it's also got some pretty in-depth stuff like skin temperature, blood oxygen, and strain meters. It combines all of this info to figure out how fit you are and then make recommendations like how to avoid over or under training, how much you're recovered and how much sleep you need. If you're into training and interested, it needs a subscription package, which is 30 pounds a month. And you then get the sensor and the strap for free. Giro have added an all mountain flat pedal shoe to their lineup with the new latch. 
It's got what they're calling mute foam in the midsole, which has a slower rate of rebound than traditional EVA foams found in shoes, meaning it should help to keep your foot from getting bounced off of the pedal when trails get chattery. Big range of colors on offer here too. I love that blue harbor color from the women's collection. Okay, that's all from me. Let's head over to Toff for the sickest thing of the week. Cheers, Tom. Hey, everyone. Right, this week's sickest thing has to be the new Anthony Missouri video. It's called Resurgence, and it's the sickest comeback video ever. Now, if you're new to riding or just don't know who Anthony is, he basically came onto the scene back in 2011. He turned up at Crankworks, just blasted this hit like twice as high as anyone else. Uh, he was also one of the first people ever doing front flip flat drops, uh, but it wasn't him, it was either Justin Wipe or Sam Pilgrim who got MBD on that. Anyway, yeah, he turned up at Crankworks, blasted to the sky, got a podium, basically got sponsored by like all the big companies straight away at super young, like 19 or something. And within a few years, he was just like an absolute rock star of mountain biking, like literally head to toe, energy drinks, sponsored food, like pedals and jockey wheels and like anything you could imagine it was just like sponsored the guy was like so pro well until about two years ago where he basically got it looked like he just got dropped or pied ways by almost all of his sponsors and just no one knows why or how um so yeah he was like kind of quiet for a little while but then this is like the sickest comeback ever. He got put on Polygon and he just put out this new edit and the whole thing's just absolutely fire. Now, if it was up to me, we'd play that backflip tabletop on repeat for the next minute and a half. It was so perfect. But there's so much other craziness went down in this video. He does a 540 double bar spin. He catches the bar like so high up in the air. Another thing he does is that tail whip drop. Now, I was racking my brain for ages trying to figure out where I've seen that drop before. And it was in Crank 3, Gareth Dyer. Shout outs to Gareth Dyer. I haven't seen him in ages. And another sick clip was the 360 double bar spin, so like a double truck, but it was a double sling, a double bar spin, no catch in the middle. You don't really see them very often at all. Anyway, so there's a bunch of other crazy clips in this, but it's obviously all about the banger. The banger is actually insane. It's a backflip 180, so a flare to fakey on a jump. Like a massive jump and to dirt. No resi, no mulch. A flare to fakey on dirt. That's my sickest thing this week. Either for the flare to fakey, like insane backflip table, the other table, or just the fact we got a super sick Anthony Missouri comeback thanks to MindSpark and Polygon. Right, time to go back to the shed. Thank you, Tom and Toff. Entertaining as always. Um, yeah. Right, it's time to have a look in the GMBN shop because there's something big going on at the moment. We've got an end of season sale. Yeah. And Neil, have you seen what's in this sale? Oh my God. Up to 50% off, that's almost half mine. Nearly. Nearly, and I'm good at maths. And I'll tell you what, there's some great stuff in there. There's some Descent jerseys in there, which I'm very keen on. Um, and there's also the red Corti that I didn't get earlier in the one. year. It's a bargain. Yeah, so there is some amazing stuff going on in the shop at the moment. So if you want to support the channel, support us guys going out and getting videos made, then head over to the GMBN shop. You can get your hands on some of this lovely stuff. Appearing on, which side is it appearing on, Leo? Over on this side. Uh, look at that, just in front of Neil's face. You can get your hands on some of that for some great prices. Fantastic. Yeah, thanks for your support. Right, next up, let's take a look at some hacks and bodges from you, but also some of the great stuff that's been coming from Eurobike um, that Doddy was taking a look at. Okay, before we get into your hacks and bodges, um, I thought this was a good point to just, have you seen any of this stuff Doddy's been looking at? I in have. Eurobike? Oh, it's so nice to see some stuff at a show. Tell you what's interesting though, mountain yeah. bikes, new mountain bikes especially, new tech, doesn't always look good. No, no. Well, this in 10 fork I think looks kind of funky, but mm. really interesting. It's got like a rearward axle path. So all these high pivot bikes, it's supposed to work well because the mm. rear, shot, rear wheel moves out of the way with the bump. This fork, you've seen it, it's got like a crown that goes backwards so that it gets the rake, the angle on the fork, so that's almost rearward. Right. I think it looks a bit weird, but I'd like to try it. That's yeah, Doddy it, with it, as well. I, I actually think it looks all right. <laughs> I like that too. And there, uh, there were so many things that Doddy was pointing out, some cool shoes actually that I really liked. There was some great stuff over in Eurobike and it's great to see Doddy back at the shows. Yeah. Um, if you want to <laughs> see some more of that, some detail, then head over to GMBN Tech uh, and get Doddy's rundown of that. He did a fantastic job out of Eurobike. Also, actually, EMBN, some interesting e-bike stuff as well. Yeah. If you're yeah, into definitely. that side of things. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing that for. I was just just on the Indian show. I am into that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> okay, now into your hacks and bodges this week, and we're starting with this one from Joseph. Yeah. Um, this is the Kona Coil Air. Um, 
But being serviced in a hack of a spot. It because... looks clean, which is good, because I'd be worried about leaving a skid mark on the wall. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I've got to say, right, I've not ridden one of those Kona coil airs, but I think that might go in one of the worst bikes. Careful, ever. Martin. Joseph only lives down the road in Bristol, so careful I'm, what you I'm not convinced by that bike. But anyway, <laughs> thanks for sending it in, um, Joseph. That is definitely a very unique place to be building or servicing your bike. Next up, we've got this from Joshua. Look at it, it just looked like a normal white helmet just, to you, Neil, doesn't it? helmet, mine. Check that out. Oh. Turn the lights off, it's glow in the dark. Oh, what? He used so glow clever. in the dark tape and scissors and he just sort of made his own yeah. little it's design. Brilliant. It's brilliant, it's actually pretty safe, isn't it? Yeah. That's actually a really good idea. I like that. So, great hack, wouldn't say it's pretty. Now check this out, Neil. I think this is this week's winner. This yeah. is from Jimmy, he's 3D printed. Whoa. This mud guard. Now, other like than it. the colour, okay? Yeah, 3D printed it out of the colour, what? He's 3D printed it out of caramel by the look. <laughs> yeah, that's what but, I thought. But look <sighs> at look at the size of that print. That's, uh, that's a sentence I never thought I'd say. Uh, and it fits, but, it fits on the Rock Shocks 4. You can see on yeah. that last picture, it kind of goes in the back of the what do you call it? The crown? No. Isn't that amazing? I would never have thought you could build something that big out of a 3D print. Yeah. I mean, the days have arrived where we can literally just download an object. I thought 3D printing was for nerds. <laughs> and then that. you found out I did it. And then, and then I found out you could print mud guards. I was like, yes, for nerds. <laughs> 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 oh dear. Um, yeah, that's some great hacks and bodges, but the old 3D print is always very difficult to beat. Um, I tell you what, next week, why don't you send in all of your best all you nerds, send in the best 3D print you've got and maybe we'll feature them in uh, the show next week. Send them into the GMB and upload, upload it along with your uh, bike vault pictures and of course your fails, your bails, your sends and of course anything else you would like us to see. It's a great way to get involved in the show. Right. Now, EWS is getting to a momentous moment in the season. It's all starting to boil very hot. Let's head over to Rich just to see what he thinks is happening at this week's event. Thanks guys, yeah, EWS Crans Montana is done and dusted. Richie Rood took the win in the men's category, followed by Jesse Melloed and Martin Mays in third place. It's good to see those top guns back at the top. Jack Moyer had a little bit of a crash and was nursing an injury, but still managed to salvage a 10th place. In the women's race, it was Melanie Pujan again taking top honors with Morgan Shah hot on her heels and Noga Karem, despite two massive crashes in both the pro stage and stage four, still clinging onto third place for a very respectable result there. Well done to all the finishers, an amazing race, but now it's on to finale for everybody, except for us. We're here in Larks just doing a few bits of filming, so keep your eyes on the channel in the future for that content coming your way. But for now, back to you guys. Right, it's throwing mugs time. I mean, it's caption contest time. And we have got a fantastic caption contest photo from last week. It's Blake, and I'm gonna start us off, if that's all right. Yes. Um, it's from Samuel, this first one. He says, no one believed how Rich stained his trousers until now. <laughs> Steve Kraska, Blake fails to contain his excitement seeing the latest hardtail from Newt Proof. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. It's a very low bar this week, but the picture asks for it, really. But um, I think, I actually like that one from Steve, actually, at the end. Yeah, he does like a Newt Proof hardtail quite yeah. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's our winner this week. Um, but you will be receiving yourselves one of these fantastic GMBN mugs. Yeah, brand new. Um, all, so all well thrown. done. Um, so congratulations to you. Uh, I think we're going to send you this one. <laughs> I mean, unbreakable. <laughs> Sounded like a mug. An unbreakable mug. It's on its way to you now. It's rolling down the street. Um, if you would like to try and win yourself a GMBO mug, maybe this one. It's dangerous. Um, it is dangerous. Then please send us your caption for this photo. Yes, that's your photo for next week's show. Get involved. It's a great way to win prizes. We shouldn't really throw these around, mine. It's fine, look. It's, you can't bust it. Yeah. They're unbreakable. They're brilliant. Mm. It's sort of like, you know, no matter what you do. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> that would have been awful. 
coming up on the channel this week. Neil, what can we look forward to? Well, Martin, there's a very exciting video tomorrow. We can't tell you too much because it's embargoed until tomorrow, but there's a certain bike with the, we couldn't tell you much about it a little while ago. Doddy did a bike check on it. So you can kind of guess anyway from that. Anyway, there's a video coming about that bike tomorrow. You find nice. everything you need to know about it. Very cryptic. Um, mm. I'm looking forward to the high jump challenge. Blake yeah. is taking Chopper, Grant Fielder, and uh, Ben Deacon to see who can do the biggest high jump. That's going to be exciting because like, I know I know Chopper can jump. And big. I've never seen uh, Blake do any athletics, so they're doing like the 100 metre <laughs> rush run after as well. <laughs> God, that would be disappointing. <laughs> that would be such a disappointing video. Uh, but yeah, that's coming up and I'm looking forward to seeing it and you should too. Right, Neil, time for the bike vault. Oh, we need yeah. a bell and some bikes. Right. Throw it. I'm a oh. good catch. <gasps> I thought that was a bike getting thrown then. Right. The bike vault. The bike vault. Yes, we are in the bike vault. Neil, first bike. Wow, for, I'm actually looking. This is a 2016 Santa Cruz Bronson, although I wouldn't have said it was that old. CC, so that is a top of the line carbon. This is Telford Tropshire, my neck of the woods. Ride in the local spot. I've heard some good things about this recently. Mm. It's like the Reek, and I've heard there's some amazing trails there, so I need to check it out. I've not been for ages. What are you giving that bike? Um, I think that is nice. Nice. Okay, we're next in with Zachary's Fazari. Fazari, yeah. Wow. These, I'm pretty sure these are the Italian brand. They make that super light cross country frame. I could be wrong, because mm. you don't hear much about Fazari, do you? No. It's like Ferrari, but they've spelt it wrong. It is. Um, what are you thinking about this bike, Neil? It kind of reminds me of a Santa Cruz Nomad. Does it? An older one. Okay, and you're giving it a... Nice. A nice, yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna move on. Next, wow, I said we had a shocker in the bike vault this yeah. week. Look at this blooming thing. Do you remember when Rob Warner rode one of them? It's a giant rain, must be, surely? It uh, is. In Perthshire. <laughs> so, who else? Um, Stu Thompson, probably in that neck of the woods, would have ridden one of these back in the day. I wonder if it's one of Stu Thompson's ex bikes. And Neil Donaghy. No, never rode a giant. No. You got that fact wrong, Martin. Looks <laughs> unlike me. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, it looks so weird with these tiny little wheels. Dark, Daniel bikes it? have not survived the wheel size change as well as others. It looks really short as well. Yeah. The whole bike looks compacted. Yeah, it? they look really tall, I guess, really tall. But um, I think yeah. I think it's super nice though. Do you reckon? I think just seeing an old bike's cool. And I feel like we've really slagged off some old bikes today. Uh, they, I bet that would have worked really well. Old Giants have always, well, Giants. Is super nice. See what I mean? Unbreakable. Yes, next up, we have got... <laughs> oh, what's that? Stanton Sherpa uh, in Anglesey, Australia. Mm. Uh, riding some local trails after the back burning was done. The landscape was amazing to ride through. You know what I'm going to say. Oh, I think that's cool. No. You don't like the tan walls. I don't like the tan walls, but he has put the tan seat on, brings it back slightly level. Should have had tan grips, really. But maybe that would have been too Green far. Grips. I like it. It's nice. Oh, it's nice, yeah. It's nice. Yeah. I'm not ringing the bell for tamils though. Oh god, we're getting the tam tamils everywhere. Ooh, what is that? This is a Kingdom Vendetta from Sheldon. Titanium frame, which I always like. Tie stem. Ooh. Pike Ultimates, XCI drivetrain, Hope E4s, uh, brakes, Cr uh, cane crank, e, uh, e wings even. The titanium cranks, they're super expensive. It's really pretty. I like titanium. I think the whole thing's really pretty. I mean, I want to, I want to slate it so hard because of the tamils, but I'm finding it hard to. It's a pretty fancy. Well, it's not really a dirt jump bike, but it's good for dirt jumps. Would you like to ring yeah, it? I won't ring on. it. It will seem sarcastic. Well done, Johnny's Kona Wazo. Wazo, it's a fatty on Burrow Hill, just outside Melton Mowbray, Ooh. home of the pork pie. You fatty. Pork pie. This was must have been not that recently. How did this photo just show up in our? Inbox. I don't know. I don't know. It's I like not, it. It's, it's very nice. Well, I think we did have several pictures of different times of the year of this bike. I've got a feeling Johnny really loves it, so I don't want to say anything too bad. <laughs> okay, because he really he did send me some pictures of it in lots of different places. So I'm I'm tempted to say it's super nice, but um, I'm you, think, you on the I'm, show, I reckon. Or? Actually, I rode a fat bike. Was it last winter when it, I ran into work and got the fat bike out and rode it in the snow and it was wild good. So can I? Go on then. Well done, I love a fake. They're cartoon bikes. And we're out of the bike vault. 
Thank you very much for sending your bikes in. I love seeing them. There's some good ones, eh? Yeah, some, some great ones. Average ones as well. Yes, I'm very done. Um, thank you for watching the show. Thanks for being here, Neil. It's Cheers, great Mark. when you're in. It always Love feels it. like we're, we're a bit more accurate when you're here. <laughs> Me and Blake were a bit wavy, up and down, up and down. All right. Yes. Uh, don't forget, viewers, you can get involved in that all bear competition. I'm sure you haven't forgotten, because you've probably done it already, but if you haven't, get involved. Design your own bike. We want to see it as well, and you might win the bike. Absolutely. Uh, fingers crossed for everyone out there. Um, and thank you for watching. Make sure you love, like, and share on all the social channels. Give us a like and we can get mountain biking out to the masses. Really appreciate it. But to play us out, Neil, let's take a look at some of the bits of riding that didn't go well this week. Uh, Hold tight. Oh, 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 Ugh! <sighs>